Wat is nou een kwartiertje op een mensenleven? Geen enkel probleem. The show must go on. Yes. Ja? Okay, jongens, we are live. What is a quarter? No, any problem. The show must go on. Well, welcome in Ginza Sushi, the best sushi restaurant in Hall and Schree, Overijssel, the Netherlands. Let's introduce you a couple of very important people. One, the beautiful lady on my left side. So, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Rianne. I'm a master student in industrial design engineering at the UT and uh, well, I'm here to answer all of your questions and to ask questions myself. Um, you might also know me from the cooking vlog at you today. Um, so if you have any questions, post them in the YouTube chat below and I will read them to you. So. Okay, and now please clap your hands. Clap your hands for the one and only Mr. Sushi Man, the best <laughs> sushi chef of whole Europe. Please. Thank you, Bob. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Luki. Uh, I'm uh, one of the sushi chefs in the Ginza restaurant. So today I'm gonna show you uh, how to make sushi like in the um, first good and easy way. Okay, thank you, Luki. We are so exciting. Well, you make the best sushi you ever try, you ever taste, and you get a bag, you bought a bag. But what's inside the bag? The bag is very important. Of course, you have the lovely napkin. The napkin with the sushi, with the Ginza logo. Please show it, please read it, and please keep it. Okay, what we also have is rice. Rice is very important. Every restaurant has its own rice. I can't tell you the ingredients of our rice. I can't say anything about the rice, but trust me, this is very special rice. The most beautiful rice you ever taste. And this. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, savior. This savior, it's pressed savior. It's very important for the sushi. We have a couple of uh, uh, insights, but you can use a couple of them. And this is so important for the, for the taste of the sushi. Our chef cook tell you about everything. And then we also have this, it's foley. Foley is also very important. It's also very important. And Luki will show you. It's very important for the rolling of the sushi. It's very nice. And this, yeah, the bamboo matches. The bamboo matches, especially from Tokyo. I get it from Tokyo. I love it in Tokyo. This is very important to make the sushi, to make the sushi beautiful, much beautiful. And what we hear inside, here we have inside the crab sticks, we have concumber, we have um, um, uh, avocado, and of course, paprika. These are the ingredients for the lovely sushi. And we have more. Oh, boys and girls, I love soya. I love soya. It's very normal because sushi is a traditional Japanese food and it's normally, it's for uh, to take care, to, uh, to prepare the fish. And they try to make the fish very well. And after that, uh, it is a difficult word, it's um, a fermentieren, you know? Fermenting. Yeah, fermenting. They fermentate the fish and then they do it with rice. And at one moment, they thought, they taste, oh, it's very nice, the fish and the rice. So that's about, that's why the history of sushi. That's sushi, it's very popular. And now it's a delicatessen in whole worlds. And hey, I love these chopsticks. I love these chopsticks. It's very good. It's very good. And try it at home. Try to use those chopsticks and try to eat with it. And then you are real Japanese. You are real Japanese man. I love it. And what we also have, we also had ginger. Ginger, yes, especially from Japan. This is specially ginger, and you also can use it by the sushi. When you eat it, uh, ginger, it's very important. I love ginger. Yeah, you love ginger? Yes. Okay, for you, for free. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank oh, you. boys and girls, listen now very well. This is the best story sauce in the whole world. What's the ingredient? Sorry, I can't tell you because Luki made this by his own. And this is so lovely. You will taste it in the sushi. Oh, beautiful. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I love this, beautiful. But what we have? We have also here pasta. Pasta, 
pasta and nog eens pasta. Salmon pasta and tuna pasta. We make the sushi with it. Oh, lovely. And samago. Samago. Masago. Sorry. Samago. Masago. Masago. What's in the name? Masago are fish eggs. We have it. We color it uh, orange with a pencil, but it doesn't matter. It's very nice. There are fish eggs, and we can use it for the sushi. It's also a nice, nice color. And then we also have the mayo, not the standard mayo, not the uh, Holland's glory mayo. This is also the special mayo, Luki made by himself. I wait, 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 wait. Oh, Luki, you are a master of sushi. My God, my God, I love this. And also, you need, what is this? What is this? Tell me. You can call wasabi. Wasabi. But normally, no, not, not those ones. Yeah. If you make it in a natural way, then you have, um, this looks like a wool stick. Yeah. And then you need to um, shake. And then after that is natural wasabi. But yeah, we, we only have this now. It's really hard to uh, uh, get the natural wasabi. Yes. I think it's not possible here. And it's also very expensive, but this is a good wasabi lookalike. And it's so hard, it's so hard. It has a very special taste. Please try it, but you're on fire when you try it. Trust me, babies, trust me. And on this moment, we are looking to looking. Okay, that's everything inside the bag. But now, Mr. Luki himself, he wanna show you the best sushi he can make. He do it fast and he show you how to make it. And of course we taste it. Look, go ahead. Oh. Okay, after everybody need that water because the rice is sticky. Okay, so you're using uh, water? Yes, only just the water, not, not that cold, not that hot. It's like in the middle way. So a bit low, we say in the Netherlands. Yes. Yeah. You take the rice. If it's not enough sticky the rice, you can use more water. You take the rice and then you think you need to spray. Don't worry, we will do it slower afterwards. <laughs> this yeah. is just a showcase. Yeah, yeah, it's only for the pro. Yes. Okay, so you're putting the rice on the entire sheet. Yes. Sticking yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. Do not push too hard because then you you're breaking the rice. Okay. So just like um, gently. Yeah, just yeah. like gently. Okay, if you have too much rice in your hand, you can use the dukya. Dukya. Yeah. To make your hand is clean. And also the cutting board needs to be clean. Yeah. Then you need to turn around the sushi, more paper with the rice. And then you can start to cut the avocado. Yes, to cut the avocado. Okay, not that way because you already have uh, the half cut. So you cut it in a in a quarter. Yes. And you take it off. So that's way easier. Yes. You can cut bigger, smaller, or maybe there is another way. Mm -hmm. If it, if the avocado is too hard like this now, mm -hmm. you can cut. Greatly. Yeah. Okay. Now you have the avocado. Okay, this time I'm using only cucumber inside. Shrimp. Shrimp. Yes. No? See? It's sticky. So you use you can use some water. Okay, so use water to stick yes. them together. No, uh, use water to do not stick uh, your yeah. finger so to the rice. Yeah, so to clean your hands, yes. use the water. And also, and then you start the rolling with your hand. Uh -huh. You need to see this small finger, uh, black. Mm -hmm. I am gonna show you, there is, see, I didn't close yet the maki. Yeah. So you need to see this one and then just roll it. When it's done, this time you clean a little bit.
So and now the, the, yeah. the roll is done, and now you cut sections, small pieces. Not yet. Oh, not yet. yet. You need to use the folly. This not that sticky folly, what you have at home. Mm -hmm. That's why they give you one. Yeah, so this is different foil than the usual uh, uh, yes. foil you can buy at the supermarket. Yes. And then, when it's done, you can use the bamboo. The matcha. The matcha, yeah. And then push. You press it. Yes, but not too hard. It's like gently. And then you roll one time up. You roll. This time you can take the folly. Then one more time down. And then it's finished. Wow. And the avocado? Yes, the avocado I will put in the top. Okay. Cut on the avocado. Yeah, it's my fault. I didn't put it too far. I will try to make it for you. Yeah, that's really not good avocado. <laughs> so the avocado um, is not ripe enough, but um, um, you get the idea. We're getting another avocado. Yes, oh, thank you. This one is uh, more soft. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Because when you want to um, put the avocado in the top, then you need a soft one. Yeah. Otherwise, you cannot cut easy. And what do we do with these? Can we put these in the sushi? Um, we can put inside, but uh, in the top, it's not good. Okay, yeah. Because if you want to put in the top, then you need really... Yeah. Wow. So, you can open the avocado like this. Okay, so you spread it out, and yes. then you put your knife? Yes, under. And then put in the top. Cool. Yeah. If it's not enough, you see, mm -hmm. then you cut another one. Okay, so someone is saying it's a little too fast. Don't worry. This is just the showcase. After this, he will do it step by step so everyone can go along. Yes. Do you have to do it? This time I also, again, use the Okay, only, so you use your match again? Yes, only but only for the... Just for the top? Yes, only for... Very gently? Yes, do not broke the avocado also. Yeah. Yeah, and then now the roll is almost finished. So this time you need to cut first half. Okay. You can use some water. And then you do eight sticks. So you cut eight pieces out of this one? Uh, no, six. Six. I'm sorry. Six. <laughs> of course. But you can cut for eight. It's, the, it's always depends. Yeah. Uh, how you like. Okay, Lucky. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Yeah. Only one second. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> yes. We are so hungry. Oh, yes. Thank the you, Lucky. The best part about food is presenting. Yes. Yes. You can choose okay. any sauce you want. I'm using the eel sauce, like the unagi. The eel? Yes. It's oh, for the eel. Also uh, unagi sauce. Yes. You can call this. Oh, delicious. Maybe like this. And then in the top, you can use maybe like this, the mayo. Or you can also spray it how you like it. Yeah, okay. That's an easy. Look at this. Look at this, boys and girls. Delicious. I love the sushi. Oh, you can. Sorry, we have to taste it. We really have to taste it. Ladies first. Okay, just my hands. Yeah, of course. It's sushi time. Oh, boys and girls, I love it. Mm -hmm. This is. Mm. 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 Lovely, lovely. Don't talk with your mouth full. 
Sorry. Mm. Okay. This was this was the best sushi. This was very nice. Okay, it was very fast, very fast. But now we will show you how to make the other sushi in slow motion. So you can see in your room, you can show in your room and you can eat in your room, but you have to make the best sushi like Luki did. Okay, Luki. Yes. They also have to take a spoon, a little spoon. They also have to take a dukia yes. because yeah. working clean is yeah. very important. Yeah, because very clean. important. Boys and girls, are you ready for the action? Are you ready for the first sushi roll? Please, which roll? Tell me. This can call California roll. The California roll. Yes. One of the most popular sushi in the sushi restaurants. Boys and girls, please sit. Please drink something. But now the show is beginning. Luki, show us the best California roll. Okay. And take care. Don't eat your hands. Success. So we have the same ingredients, everybody. So I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna make the same as you have at home, and then it's easy. So what do we need for this one? Yeah, for this one, we need of course the rice. The first one, the seaweed. You can open now, no problem. It will be so hard, I know. <laughs> you have the seaweed. This one you don't need anymore. Okay. Uh, I think we can start, right? Yes. Yeah, we can yes. Start. Okay. So use the water. Everything ready? You see? Okay, so you have to wet your yes. hands first. First step, first step, always make your fingers. Make not, your fingers first. Yes, not all your hand, only Just the fingers. fingers. Yes. And then put out the rice. Then you can take only one. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. The seaweed, about the seaweed, you have two sides. Two sides have, of the seaweed. Yes, two sides of the seaweed. This is the roast, you know. This is the shiny, you can see. This part is nasty. So you always need this one. Then you have the stripes. So the shiny part on the back. Yes, the shiny part on the cutting yeah, board. On the cutting board. Yes. So you need to use this. You take your rice in the middle. You a little bit open. Okay, so you leave it more open than the previous one or spread it. Oh yeah, because uh, yeah, now I'm going like a slow yeah. way. So if the rice not enough, no problem. You can take a little bit more. You start in the top, spreading. See, like this. Yeah. And then for the end of the nori, in the this side. Yeah. You only a little bit pushing down you can take a little bit more rice don't don't need to be perfect okay because normally you can use uh, gloves and mm -hmm. then it's not that sticky but now but, uh, you can use water yeah now you can use water yeah because this is the but looky when they want perfect you have to come to our restaurants you have to come yeah, to course. ginza sushi all you can yeah. eat okay looky thank yes. you yes then you can look and feel the, maybe the different. Oh. <clears throat> so if you have the nori with the rice, it's finished. Okay, this so side. like this, it's done. Yes, the spreading the rice. All right, then, take your time. And then, uh, no, I'm searching the... Okay, so the rice is done. And now yeah. we're looking for what goes in, the sesame seed? No, the sesame. You put it in the oh, top. Oh, on the outside. Yes. Yeah. It will be the outside. So you take your box of sesame. Yeah. Only just 
So you put your saison on the out. So this will be the outside of the roll. Yes. Okay. Maybe you don't need all of it. You can push a little bit the saison, then it's done. Okay. You change. So you turn it around. Yes. And then now you need the mayo. Maybe you can put in the top also, but it also can be a few tricks. You can use your smaller spoon, lipo. Take a little bit, and then just test like this. Because of course, if you want the professional way, yeah. you have that way, <laughs> and then it's very easy to inside. But uh, yeah, this time, no problem. You only use it a little bit. And then you have six pieces of cucumber. Now you need two. So two pieces. Two pieces. Yeah, two because pieces. we all of the three all we have mm -hmm. cucumber inside. You put the cucumber. Yeah. And then you have the crab stick. One. Also, it needs to be cut half. You cut half. And then it's done. Also, inside. There's few few uh, tip or trick. If you want look beautiful maki, if you want to mm -hmm. make a beautiful, almost need the same size of the ingredients. Okay. You see, the cucumber yeah. and the uh, the crab stick almost the same size. Yeah. So you always need the same size. Okay. Now. You're gonna cut the avocado again. <laughs> yeah, this this is what you get in the box. It's half cut. But now you need to cut again half. Okay. You only need now this quarter. Just uh, one fourth. Yes. The best way to open the avocado. I can show you like this. Okay, so it's like a, I don't know how to call this. Schil. Mm -hmm. Peel. Maybe yes. Skin. Yes, the skin. Skin. Oh, yes. And then you have the half cut avocado, but you need inside the one roll you need two stick. So always your knife. The top of the knife needs to be in, in the cutting board and then like 20, 20 degree the knife. This three finger you're uh -huh. holding the avocado in the top, not too hard, just just holding. So you sure make sure the avocado is not moving. And then one time you cut the avocado. Okay. Yeah. And then same. Now you have two avocado stick. Two pieces? Two pieces, yes, two pieces. You can put in the top. Ooh. You can put in the top. Did you use two pieces of no only? Just one, right? No, just one. Just yes. one. Yeah, always. Okay. So we have everything inside the maki. But now we need to roll it. Okay, so now you're done. Now we start rolling. Yes. Okay, great. And that's Almost. very difficult, very difficult rolling. Yes. Now I'm trying to show you, make your fingers again wet. The most good tip, you push two finger <laughs> like this. So you this. use your thumb? Yes, inside. Yeah. Only like in the halfway, the two finger, and then the rest of fingers, you're holding the ingredients, what you have. Because otherwise, if you're not uh, holding, then it will be uh, go everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you, not, you, you need to keep your finger here, yeah. and then the rest of fingers keeping. And then one time, you 
closing, it can close call like closing the market. And then you again, you have this black uh, CV, what you can see. So yeah. one centimeter? Yeah, it's like- um, Pinky. Yeah, it's like your small finger. And then, and you have done with this, you start rolling. This doesn't matter which side, you can start right or left. And then you, you really closing the market. Okay. It's like the last, uh, last And you time. don't use a matcha? Matcha after. Oh, after. Okay. Yeah, because, yeah, there's two different. You can use always the matcha and then with the matcha rolling. But with hemp, it's more, it's more better, I mm -hmm. think. Because then, now you can feel how the maki looks like inside also. It needs to be almost the same size of the maki. Yeah. When it's done, now you can use the maki. But first, of course, Oil. the poly, the not sticky poly. You put in the top again. In the bamboo. Uh -huh. First one in the top, you push a little bit. And then you take the bamboo and the folly at the same time. Yeah. And then like this, you're moving one time the maki. So you roll it over. Yes. Yeah. But, and then again, yeah. You can a little bit push. And then push it. Yes. And then this time you can make the the form how you want to look like because you can make yeah. the round sushi or so the second time that you push it you can make it uh, in a shape that you like. So you can yes, do square yes, yes. or round yeah, yeah. or and then the last time you again you take the bamboo and the folly mm -hmm. and then last time back only one back, time yes once. yes so, so one times. time yeah one time up and then one time forward one time backward and then yes. back again forward yes. again back again three times <laughs> and then it's done so that's it yes this is the california roll Oké, like okay, boys and girls, dit was, dit was not normal. Dit was high quality. And I think, I suppose, in a, at your home, at your room, the quality is also very good, very well. Please, uh, vanwege de tijd, we have no time to run. We make it fast, a little bit faster. Luki makes the other wasabi roll the wasabi roll is also very popular he want to make it a little bit faster because the time is running but trust me you show you will see and he will make the best sushi Luki, please yes. give us give us all the wasabi tuna okay okay like before yeah like before same you make your hand your fingers wet, you take the rice, same, you put in the middle, and then starting in the top. When you finish the spreading the rice in the top, then you goes down. Yes, no, not yet. I'm sorry. Oh. A little bit cleaning. When this done again, spreading rice, you take your 
the small box of the masago, the green masago. Fish eye fish. So you can know. smell it. Nice. Try to smell it. Yeah. It's nice. And then you go inside and so just you... gently put in the top. All over. Yes, all over. Oh, what a nice color. What a nice color. Yes. Really. The green one is really beautiful. The fish eggs, we have it in a lot of colors, yeah? Very yeah. popular in Japan. Sometimes, usually orange. Also. Yes, yeah. orange. Uh, we have the red one. You red? Can, yeah, gold one, gold? black one. Yeah. And it's done. Again, turn around. And then you have the tuna pasta. Oh. It's really special also. You open the box or the tuna pasta. We need it. You spreading inside, almost same movement as the rice, mm -hmm. but you leave all the pasta in the in the middle. Okay, so you sit, yeah. Yeah, so that's all. And then what goes in? And then yeah. we need again two stick cucumber. Two stick. Yes. And that's it. Yes. Well, easy. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, but the pasta is very special. The yes. pasta is very special. Yeah. It's also yeah. homemade. Secret yeah. recipe. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, you can use avocado also if you like, but with cucumber, it's um, the taste is a little bit fresh. Yes. So, okay, the rolling the sushi, the same, using two finger under, mm -hmm. and then the rest of fingers, all the things inside, ingredients. Closing, you can see this side again, and then you just roll it. And the wasabi, on a roll, almost finished. You can clean your hand a little bit because the green masago will be on your finger. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. It will be everywhere. Yes. <laughs> again, use the folly, use the bamboo. And the same. One time you push a little bit, second time you up, third time, third time you down, down. and then you can push a little bit in the top also, make the and then it's done. So now we have already the California and the Okay, boys and girls, this was very nice. Of course, we had a third roll, we have a third roll, but the time, the time is running and we are too late. Sorry for the third roll, but try this as a home. You can do it. When you see it, you can make it the same quality as Lucky. Okay, we have to make an end of it. I hope you enjoy our cooking show. I hope you like the sushi. I love, I hope. We will see you back in our restaurants. Ginza, all you can eat. Welcome. Have a nice hands. Clap your hands for our ghost, for our <laughs> chef cox. Yeah, yeah, nice, 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 nice. We are going back to the campus. There is a very nice program. I hope to see you back. Thank you for your attention and perhaps a next time. And eat smakelijk. Eat smakelijk. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye.
Happy first anniversary to all operators, contributors and members of Incubase. To even more bright minds and big things to start here at Incubase. Uh, goedemorgen, ik ben Radia. Ik werk bij Asitus Schoonmaken. Ik uh, doe deze pan met plezier schoonmaken, bijna een jaar. En vandaag hoor ik dat een jaar bestaan. Dus ik zeg gefeliciteerd met een jaar. It also provides a nice and safe environment and has a nice design, like my helmet has. And of course, it accelerates the greatest ideas as no other incubator can do it. Incubase, have a nice birthday. Bye. Good evening everybody at home and welcome at uh, one year Incubase live here from Incubase. Um, as being said before, I uh, hope uh, you enjoyed the, 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 the sushi cook-along. Um, thanks also people at Jinsa. It, it looked at least delicious and we had some prepared uh, sushi already here available. Um, we're in Incubase, and Incubase, uh, as also uh, being said before, is an initiative and an incubator that is being launched by the Student Union of the University of Twente, that actually is also the owner of this building, the Bastille, where we are, um, the University of Twente and Novelty. Now, I can imagine that you're maybe watching and you think, what is an incubator actually doing, and why should it exist, or maybe shouldn't exist? Now, no worries, during the next one and a half hours we are going to discuss these kind of topics. So we show you what an incubator is or should be and we're going to discuss with um, other people about it. You see some startups that are also connected to this incubator and we're going to talk to Kees and Anne Kolen. Um, and we will ask them some difficult questions, some easy questions so that you at least sh uh, learn a lot about business and how to uh, maybe set up your own business if you're watching. Uh, and our interest in doing that. Um, but it's also good that maybe we first start testing a bit what your knowledge about maybe this incubator or this university or entrepreneurship in general is. And for that, you saw already probably in the chat that you could join via Kahoot uh, to join us in a quiz. And I'm luckily not alone here in this incubator. I'm sitting at this table now alone and some others will join. Um, but from for that, I for myself can watch in that direction. I see already Gil and Emily from the student union standing over there. So let's go over there for the quiz. All right, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Um, as Mike just said, we're over here and we're starting with the quiz about the incubus, about student entrepreneurship in general and about the building we're in currently in the Bastille. I'll be hosting this quiz together with Emily from the student union and I myself, Gil from the student union as well. Let's start off easy with some questions about the Bastille. When was this building designed? Currently the center for student entrepreneurship and uh, student boards actually, which is uh, outside of Corona times, actually very busy and always full of students, I think. And as you can see, all these dates are quite a way back. But I think that uh, even though the answer should be on the screen right now, 1969, which is quite a while ago, I think we're still, and we're showing that with the incubus itself, we're keeping it relevant by keeping on renovating the building. Indeed. And nobody got this question right. Is that correct? Ooh, wow. Yeah. So we are at the second question. Of course, when we started this project, we had to come up with a name. And now you've already seen, and probably already know, that currently our name is Incubus. But before we came up with the name, this name, we came up with another name. There were a lot of ideas. So the question is, what was the original name for the Incubus? Indeed, it's Startup Hub. That was one of the first main ideas. And after that, it became Incubus. Exactly. All right. And then, how many people have actually been involved in the project of the design, ideas of the Incubus, and the largest stakeholders in the project? So, including the student union and novelty, of course. How many people do you think were actually needed to come up with the basic ideas and the plans for the building? So we're not including construction workers and the like, we're just wanting to see how many people you think are involved in the actual project. Could be a hard one, right? Nine, there were only nine people involved. You think that's very little for a project of this size, but actually, it appears to be plenty. 
So the numbers right. are changing. Let's go to the next question. So Gil already told about the whole development of this RD. But how long did the renovation actually take place of the incubase? How long did it take? What do you think? So it's actually all very small amounts of time for such a big project, I think. But then how much time was it actually done and developed? In only six months' time. I think that's amazing. It's really fast, isn't it? Such a project. All right. And where would the incubators actually originally be built? Because we have a lot of places on campus where student entrepreneurship would fit right in. But none, of course, is go good as the Bastille where we're housed currently. So the incubator, of course, right now is in the Bastille. Which, which other buildings were being considered for the building of the incubators? And it's actually the gallery, which is quite a ways away from where we are now, the Center of Entrepreneurship at the university. So then we can already go to the next question. Question six. Of course, when we got an agreement on this whole project and we want to start building, we first had to come up with a design. So the question is, what is not proposed as a design for the interior of the incubase? And do note that while only one of these was not proposed as a design, that actually means that all the others were proposed as, an, as a design for the interior of the incubase. And indeed, a counter made of snakeskin was the only one that wasn't proposed. So all the other ones were actually. All right, we've got one guy, Kiri, on top. So um, after the potential designs Emily mentioned in the last round, um, we basically decided with the project to um, contract someone else who could actually do a more normal, more modern and more suited for a startup hub design. So who did the actual design for the incubase in the end? That was in Trema. So only two of you were right. Only two. All right, numbers are changing. Some Let's go to the last. Uh, no. No, not even. Not even. We first have a true or false question. Of course, now we're standing at a small part of the whole incubase. So I'm really wondering if you guys know if the total area size of the incubase is less than 700 square meters. So, Gil, do you know how big a football place is? I don't know. I don't know. But I believe it's less than 700. And the incubase Ooh. is larger. The incubase is actually larger than 700 square meters which makes it one of the biggest student incubators in the Netherlands. All right. And, well, if this area size is 700 square meters, how many people do you think can actually fit in the incubator at the same time? And we mean actually sit in the incubator at the same time. So we're not including this pitch area you see right here on screen, um, but actually places where people can sit and work on the laptops, work on the startup ideas. So we're including the cubicles, we're including the flex areas, but not the pitch area. And even then, we still have space for 108 people working on the startups. That's a lot, right? That's a lot. So some of you are doing really good. We already go to our last question of this round. Of course, one year ago, we had the opening of our incubase. And at this opening, we built our very own big size cube. But the question for you is, who didn't build the incubase cube during the official opening? You even see it here on the picture. There were a lot of people involved, but one of them didn't add to this. And this is indeed Eline Kikkert. Do you want to know who she is? Well, she will come back in this program. All right, and that was this for this round of the quiz. These were the first 10 questions of the quiz, which is 20 questions total. So I think we should switch back to Mike right now. See you in a bit. Bye. It's officially been a year of incubating student startups, one year of leveling up student entrepreneurship, and simply put, it's been a year of creating a space where students' dreams and ideas become a reality. So, as the Dutch Student Investment Fund, we'd like to congratulate you on this great achievement. Cheers to the first and many more years of success to come at Incubase.
Congrats Incubase! You know, when you have a problem, take a walk to the coffee machine, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and when you're back at your desk, you will see your problems are solved. I hope to see you soon uh, for a cup of coffee at Incubase. On behalf of Create Tomorrow, I would like to congratulate you on your one year anniversary, and hopefully this year will be even better. Hello, today we have two panels, a panel of incubators and a panel of startups. And uh, we start here with the panel of incubators. And uh, I'd like to welcome Mike. Hello, Mike, uh, as a representative, of course, of uh, Incubase. Hi, Peter. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Also welcome uh, Jörg Kopp from uh, Utrecht Inc. Hi, Jörg. And uh, I welcome Professor Torsten Wiesel from Münster. Um, and well, let's open the panel with Mike because uh, you're the, the birthday uh, boy more or less, one year of Incubase. Uh, a difficult year uh, due to pandemic, but what is in your opinion the highlight of the past year? Now, I think that the, the highlight is that uh, if you see that uh, how many startups are still involved in the community of what we're building mm -hmm. and, and achieving success. Um, when we were building up, you, you were there also. Uh, we saw uh, uh, one of the, 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 the startups here uh, making a film of their prototype. So they still developed in all the things the prototype, and I cannot say exactly what it is, but you saw them really developing that already. Um, so, so it's good to see that startups still uh, were able to continue uh, what they needed to do, and that they then also recognized that this is a, a marvelous building. We could, we would love to show it and and, and uh, have people over, yes. um, but you need more than a building. Okay. And the real highlight? What is? If you think, wow, that was uh, the most amazing thing. Um, so far, the opening. <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. But uh, I, 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 I hope that the most of these highlights are still coming up. Um, but it's also cool to, to have Thorsten and, and, and Joch uh, uh, here because uh, um, I think that also the highlight is that even when we're still sort of physically closed incubator, um, we have these people over that, that already helped a lot of our startups also because, uh, um, again, it's more than one building or one place or one incubator. Okay, I recognize that. Joch, welcome in, uh, in the show. It's more or less a show online. Um, your uh uh, Utrecht Inc. is in the top 10 of university-linked incubators, and that is worldwide. That's a quite an achievement. Um, what does it take to reach that? And we cannot hear you currently. The link is up, okay. Yeah, now you are. Who's talking now? Yes, please. You are in the picture now. Am I? Your, yes. Did, did you hmm. get the, the, the question? I think we're better in being an incubator than yeah, in maybe. But Thorsten, <laughs> Thorsten uh, I, I believe you uh, are hearing us better. You're from REACH uh, Euregio in, uh, in Münster from Germany. Um, Euregio means it is uh, cross-border. Is it a um, uh, REACH? Is that also focused on the Netherlands and Germany? I think the sound <laughs> is not so good. I see the audio in Zoom is still on mute, so maybe that they cannot hear us yet, but the... Can you hear them? Because yes. Can you hear us now? No. Nope. Okay, that is good. Well, Jörg, <laughs> I, I go back to you. Uh, as managing director from uh, Utrecht Inc. Uh, Utrecht Inc. is in the top 10 uh, university incubators worldwide. That's quite an achievement. What does it take to achieve uh, that? Jörg. I think they want to talk to us, but we can't hear you. Ah. Can you hear? No. Test. Check. Check. <laughs> so it's more a hello, hello moment. Hello, hello. No, yes. we are already live, but uh, Jörg, can you hear us? And Torsten? Well, it seems that there is a, uh, a glitch in the audio, so I look to the technological room and we switch to the next subject and I suggest we come back, otherwise um, it has no use. And um, the part two after this is part two of the quiz. So I suggest we go to the quiz and then come back uh, when I we fix the audio. Uh, but I think we cannot really.
quiz is not ready yet or we have to. <laughs> now, Peter, let's talk then uh, the, with the two of us so far. It's uh, 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 the, 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 the technique is working well. Yeah. As in, you, you should have been here actually or not because then we would have a party over here and celebrating a one year incubase over here. Um, but we had the main challenge of uh, still replacing some cameras and stuff that wasn't working. But I hear that at least the quiz two is ready now, so make sure you answer well, and then we will make sure that the audio is working in a bit. Exactly. All right. Thank you once again, Mike. And of course, uh, it's of course very difficult. It's, it's a bit different than doing an actual physical event in the Incubase for a one year anniversary. But of course, we're making the best of it by doing this digitally. Um, as we've heard from the previous round, uh, there's some delay on the questions you're seeing on the screen and the time you get to answer it on your phone. So we're going to try and do it a bit differently right now. We're going to mention the question from our sheets first and then um, we'll give you some seconds and then it should sync up by the time we uh, pass on through. So when I'm on the scoreboard, I'm already going to start with question 11, so this first question of the second round. You ready? Yes, I am. I am. Hope you I too. Hope you are as well. All right, so this is more about the Incubase community itself. Do you know who was actually the first member of the Incubase? It's only and one year ago. It's only one year ago. And do note that we've already said that we have had 35 members join in the past year. So you have 35 to choose from. All right. And do note that all these you're seeing on screen are actually student entrepreneurs right now working on the startup in the Incubase. And we're basically just asking who was the first. They're all doing great now, but who was the first? That was Code Sandbox. All right. Indeed. So we can go to our next question. All those startups do work here in Incubase, and they have a space which is called cubicles. So my question to you is, how many cubicles are there actually in Incubase? And for those of you who don't know what are cubicles, cubicles are actually small working spaces where you can work together with your friends or the mates you're working with on this project and further develop your ID and have your own space to work on it. So how many cubicles are there? We're, we've got over 700 square meters of area in the incubase. But how many of those square meters are actually uh, taken up by the cubicles for student entrepreneurs to work on their projects? Let's see, let's see. There Indeed, it are nine. We have nine Indeed. cubicles here, but that is not the only place where you can work on your startup. We have also a lot of flex spaces, so it's not even the only place. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, as you can see, we've got all these LED lights as we're basically hyper modern in this uh, building we're in. And it's uh, very important for us to be able to fit all your needs. So how many colors do you think these LED lights can take on? I'm very curious. I should hope we're basically fitted to suit everyone's needs, but, um, well, I don't know what you think about this. And if you look really detailed, maybe you can even already know it while you haven't even been in Incubase. So that's just a small hint. It's actually whatever color you want, and it's actually really curious that some of you got this wrong, as hopefully in the stream as well, uh, well, you can see that the LED lights on the background are green, um, which is not in the options list. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to our next question. What is written on the yellow big cube of our incubase? And maybe if you was really detailed looking, you have even seen this before, because it was actually built, this big size, at the opening. So maybe you already know it. And it's not just on the cube of the Incubase itself. It's basically the slogan of the Incubase and startups at our university in general. It's visible in multiple spaces in the Incubase and even on a lot of the merchandise we have. I yes, think. indeed. You see it a lot around. And indeed, it's big things start here. And that's actually what it is, right? It's big things starting here. It's student startups and we're trying to get them as big as possible. All right. Question 15, um, how many members does Incubase have right now? Do you know? Let's see. And I think I might have spoiled this one actually. Yeah, I, I hope think I so. didn't, I hope I didn't, but I might have. Um, 
Yeah, so do know we're only open for a year, and these members must have joined in the past year alone. So even though we've had a corona pandemic, um, the numbers you can see right here are still quite, uh, quite big numbers for such a year, we think. Indeed. The actual number of members joining is 35. Yeah, and I think I've spoiled it based on the uh, uh, correct answers I see on the screen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we go to our next question. Which incubation member won the UT Challenge last year? And for those of you who don't know the UT Challenge, I think you will see more from it during this show. So I'm wondering if you know which of our members won it last year, like in 2020. Yeah, so UT, UT Challenge, and then basically in the startup category is uh, what we're asking about. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see who's won this. And that's something uh, the Student Union organizes together with Novelty and it's running the Incubase as well, right? Indeed. It's one of the entrepreneurial events where you can join. And not even only if you have already a great idea or for a startup, you can even join with just some idea that you came up while showering or something like that. It's about everything. You know, it's really flexible. Right, and the Waves won it last year, which is one of the startups, of course, housed in Incubase right now. Okay, um, let's move on. How many members have received a top program loan? And a top program loan is basically something extra you can earn as a startup in the Incubase. It provides extra funding, it provides extra legal help, and it provides extra guidance for your startup to make sure it grows uh, as fast as humanly possible, I think. Um, yeah, so let's see, we've got 35 members, and how many members do you think have actually uh, made it into this top program? So it's all about the extra opportunities we're offering. And basically in the past year, Five of our members uh, were able to uh, receive this top program loan. It's quite a lot, right? It's quite a lot, definitely. So then we can already go to question 18 for you. How many startups does Twente have at this moment? So it's not only about Incubase, it's about our whole region, the whole region Twente. How many startups do they have at this moment? And as you can see already, the numbers are quite high, right? for only this region? Yeah, so it's not only about the startups at Incubase in this, uh, in this question, it's about startups in the entire Twente region. So it's not just students, it's basically uh, uh, working adults as well. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, how many have we got? 168 startups in this region alone, which is quite a lot. And we're happy to see that actually quite a large percentage of those is coming from the University of Twente and coming from the Incubase itself. All right, we can see these people climbing very fast and already quite a gap uh, getting in the score. But we've got, we've got some questions left, so let's see if the scores can still change. Um, so, one more specific. How much capital have startups and scale-ups from Twente raised in 2020 together? So it's basically just about the funding that startups in this region uh, were able to uh, uh, raise in 2020 alone. It's important to see that it's about 2020 alone. And it's also important to note that all the numbers you're seeing on the screen right now are actually quite large amounts of money. Definitely regarding there's only 168 startups, of which only a fraction has gotten funding, of course. Um, well, you can see it's a lot of money. And it's only for 2020, right? It's during our pandemic, and still we have 30.5 million euros left from startups. That's actually amazing that our startups have been able to raised this much funds in uh, such a weird year still. All right, Wout is still on top. Let's see, let's see what the final results will be. So we go to our last question. It's the last question where you can get points. And the question is, which founders are actually UT alumni? So you see our different options. You see a lot of big names, but the question is, who are really UT alumni? So who have been here, have been studied at our university before? And I think it's actually really big names coming up on the screen right now. Because as you can see, it's about the founder of Katawiki, the founder of Takeaway, founder of Sizeports, GitLab, Booking.com, and even Gold Neckcheck. Indeed. So let's see, whom of those are actually UT alumni? And I think you don't even have to be really in the entrepreneurial network to know this because 
probably most of you even recognize some of those names as well. They are really big names. And indeed, you can see they were all UT alumni. They have all studied at our university before. All right. So, uh, before we switch over back to Mike, let's see who's actually won the quiz and uh, who will receive a prize. I hope we do have prizes, right? Yes, of course. Right. And it will t come to you if you are the winner. And that will be on the screen right now. Exciting. All right, Wouter, congratulations. Um, well, basically, um, if you're in the top three, make sure to screen cap this on your phone. Make sure uh, you capture this on the screen to make sure we can see you're a winner. Send this in a screenshot to uh, Incubase via Instagram or something. Yeah, it's fine. And uh, we'll make sure the prizes come your way. So for the top three, big congratulations. And then back to you, Mike. I want to thank you. Well yeah, done, yeah, well done. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we could match, so I hope you won a nice prize. And we are still here in a Zoom, uh, in an international Zoom, uh, with um, Rich in Münster and uh, Utrecht Inc. And we it's noticed that they had some problem with the audio and stuff, so we, yeah. we discussed already in, in the during the quiz that it was uh, the mistake of our Utrecht or uh, our Münster, yeah. so it's up to them. What, yeah. uh, and it's not that easy <laughs> to set up an international conference, but okay, we go on. Um, we did some introduction with Mike. Uh, the question to Jörg from Utrecht Inc. Uh, you're one of the uh, most uh, uh, successful incubators worldwide in the top 10 university-linked incubators. Uh, what does it take to reach that? Hi. First of all, uh, thank you for inviting me to this, uh, to this session. I feel really honored. Um, what does it take? It takes perseverance. That means uh, we exist for uh, 11 or 12 years now. Uh, as you all know, startups is a numbers game. Uh, with that, I mean, uh, you need many to have some successful in the end. And um, yeah, through time, you will definitely get some successful startups uh, in your incubator. And then the whole uh, iteration process starts because this, those successful uh, startups uh, help uh, the other, uh, help coaching uh, the other startups and invest in the startups, et cetera, mentoring. Okay. Talking about incubators, Mike, uh, what is actually an incubator? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. As in the, 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 the question is what, 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 what we also had a bit of the pre-discussion as in what is it and what should it be? Yeah? It, it is actually a place where uh, um, uh, people with ideas, uh, like the successful cases or potential successful cases can thrive and can grow their business and, and find the right support and often also uh, uh, capital money uh, uh, to quickly dive into the process of growing uh, into something uh, uh, successful. Nice. Let's go to Munster. Uh, Thorsten Wiesel. Uh, REACH um, is, is called REACH Oregio, meaning it's cross-border. What, what is the, the uh, Oregio aspect of REACH? Yeah, also from my side, uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, well, the Oregio, it's, it's, it's cross-border. Right? Um, it's an initiative and it's a collaboration out of the University of Münster, the Fachhochschule, University of Applied Science in Münster, the digital hub here at Münsterland, um, plus then UT and Novelty. And we are together, you know, with all the partners on, on the Novelty side, on the UT side, on your side, um, we are together the Origio, uh, the, the um, cross-border collaboration between Münsterland and also then um, uh, in, in Twente. And I think the potential what we have is, is, is unbelievable. Uh, if you think about the numbers, uh, Jörg said it's a number game. Um, we do have more than 70,000 students in this area. We have more than 6,000 uh, scientists in this area. Uh, we do have a lot of companies which are um, very successful. Uh, we have some nice track records already. Uh, you, you had in the Chris booking.com uh, and so on and so forth. So a lot of alumni on your side, also a lot of alumni on our side who founded the companies. Um, so I think we do have a, an enormous potential. And I always say it's a little bit like a sleeping giant, at least on our side, it's a little more sleeping than on your side. And if we work on this together uh, as a Origio, we do have a lot of potential in incubating startups, um, but also, you know, helping companies to innovate, uh, to prepare for the next um, challenges. And especially also, you know, put the Origio together, your side, our side, on the landscape of 
not only in the Netherlands, not only Germany, but internationally. I think we can, with the size, we can compete with, with a lot of well-known centers. Um, maybe in the future, because you are there for a longer period of time already. We are just started, let's say, um, September 2019. So we have a way to go. Huh? You have said it's like 12 years, 13 years. So we have a way to go. But I think together we can do a lot. Okay, nice. York, uh, you're uh, over 10 years in, uh, in business as an incubator, while uh, Incubase and Reach uh, are relatively young. Uh, what, what did you see changing uh, the past 10 years and what will be the future? Yeah, I like the word uh, that Thorsten mentioned, uh, together. Uh, what we see is that uh, incubation at the moment is quite a regional uh, topic. Uh, you're based in, uh, in, in the Enschede area, we're based in Utrecht, you're based in Münster, and you're already working together, that's good. But what I see happening is that uh, thanks to uh, all the, uh, the online learnings uh, uh, because of Corona, uh, we will get hybrid programs and we will much more take advantage of what other ecosystems already have in place. So we're still raising startups in batches at the moment, which is quite strange because uh, starting your company should be a year-round service. They should, startups should not wait until the next batch starts. Uh, they should be able to start uh, every day, every time, every hour. Uh, and uh, meet like-minded people, maybe in other areas of the Netherlands then, or maybe even combine it with, uh, with Germany or other uh, international incubators. So um, my vision for the longer term is that we will start working together even more than we do right now. So you see no competition and also to, uh, to the others. Is there a competition between incubators or is it more important to work together as you say, Mark? And I, I would say the, the um, for sure not, as in, of course, you have these rankings and all these incubators have founders or people around them that like to see themselves on top of, of, of rankings. Um, but, but actually, if you look at with Incubase, eh, when we started this, of course, and built the business case around it, and we talked to many um, uh, uh, partners around it, I think we, uh, with, with, with also with Jorg, eh, we had many conversations during uh, conferences around the world, or sometimes just coming to, to Utrecht and to, to, to say, hey, tell us, because we don't want to invent the wheel, uh, um, we want to learn best practices. And, and, and already there, uh, there was a sort of joint venture as in, hey, but what kind of kins, things can we do together? And when we saw also Torsten building up Reach and we dived into their system. It was like, the, it started a bit like, hey, let us show you what we have because maybe we can then learn from us, for instance. And we were like, wow, is this what you already created? Can we copy it? Can we use it? Because this is actually what we are ne uh, missing. And I think that's also what Joach said, as in uh, a competition, no. As in, uh, I think that uh, uh, for, for uh, especially for startups, uh, the competition is in the market. And I think that uh, uh, um, that should be the focus. And uh, for incubators, we shouldn't compete with each other, but we should help startups entering those markets uh, much sooner because they're also not per se Utrecht, Münster or Enschede, but they're internationally. Okay, nice. Thorsten, how do you see that? And in what way do you see the, the uh, cooperation between Enschede and Münster? Yeah, so um, you know, to add to this, I think nobody is perfect, right? And, and, and we, we need to learn as much as possible in order to be as fast as possible. Uh, if everybody, uh, as, as Mike said, tries to invent the wheel for him or herself, then you know, we, we will have a lot of wheels at, at, at some time, but we won't go to a car and so on and so forth. So that's what we try to do uh, with Novelty, with Enskede, but hopefully then also with, with Utrecht. That's what we also talked about this, this afternoon already. Um, in order, we, we do have this hybrid model, as Jörg said. Uh, we, we will have a lot of things digital, which teams can work together on. Um, but this digital program, you know, if we develop it on our side, um, everybody can use it on your side, and the, vice versa. If there's something new developed on your side, we can use it as well. So that's kind of a kind of speeding up everything. But then, as Jörg also said, it's, it's a hybrid model. Uh, innovation, you know, chatting, having a BSU together won't fit via Zoom, well, we can do it if you have a beer, but really working together, really, you know, creating something bigger uh, can only be done if, if we meet. And, you know, between uh, Enschede and Münster, it's an hour, between Utrecht and uh, Enschede, it's an hour, so why not meet together uh, for an hour that's nothing in US terms, that's kind of going going to get some, some milk at the supermarket, um, and, and then we can really create something bigger together and learn from each other and help each other. 
Okay, that's very nice. Thank you. I, I look forward to spend that hour driving to Munster and also to Utrecht, although we need to speed, but yeah, this is not Germany, uh, to, to uh, meet also Utrecht Inc. Uh, thank you, uh, Jor. Thank you, Torsten. And of course, thank you, Mike. And we go to our next small video. Happy birthday, Incubase, and congrats to all the world-class startups who have been part of this incredible journey and who did not stop pushing despite a global pandemic. Cheers. On behalf of the 37th board of the Business Days 20, I would like to congratulate the Incubase on its one year anniversary. The Business Days have been connecting students and companies for years, and now with the arrival of the Incubase, entrepreneurial students are also being encouraged and supported to set up their own business. It clearly shows that the title of most entrepreneurial university of the Netherlands is very much deserved. I am looking forward to see what the future holds for the Incubase. Congratulations. On behalf of the Kick-In Committee, I want to wish you all the best for your first anniversary. During the Kick-In, we built a first connection between students and student activism. And it's great that you guys take over from there to support our students in their business ideas to another year of successful corporations. Congratulations. Okay, the next panel is about startups. And uh, we have two exciting startups here in Incubase. Uh, I met them both in the, uh, in the start program of Novelty. And I want to welcome Gianni Amor dos Santos. Hi, Gianni from uh, Flawless Hi. Workflow. Hi. And also Koen van der Brink from um, A-Waves, the winner of the UT Challenge. But ladies first, uh, Johnny, can you tell about, uh, and, and short please, about a bit about yourself, but mainly about your startup? Yeah, so I'm a UT student. I'm doing a construction management engineer. Uh, I co-founded Flawless Workflow. Uh, Flawless Workflow help, um, we help our clients develop a flawless workflow, which means that we minimize waste of time and resources while maximizing human potential. And we do that by creating automation, application and custom, custom softwares that free hours of time and let people focus what matters to them, as well as we consult our clients in their digital transformation. Very nice. Uh, we, we met each other in the start program. Was this your original idea or did you make some pivots in between? Yeah, we did pivot uh, quite a lot, actually, because <laughs> we actually had two ideas and then we kind of had to choose for one. Okay, nice. Let's uh, now go to Kuhn. Uh, Kuhn, uh, welcome. Uh, what is A-Waves? So A-Waves is a startup that I co-founded with three other people. And we are basically making a artificial intelligence DJ that can just make parties better. That's in short. Uh, so the Netherlands has been the DJ, like the DJ country, like the DJ metropole of the world right. for as long as I've lived at least. And now that's kind of falling off, uh, like Portugal and the United States are taking over a little bit in this scene. And we want to revolutionize this DJ market and make uh, the Netherlands number one again. Wow, very interesting. You're both located in uh, Incubase. We are here, but, but you are not here in Incubase uh, for uh, yeah. some time already. But what is in your opinion, uh, starting with Gianni, uh, the value of Incubase uh, to you as a startup? Yeah, it's actually huge because when you're in such an environment, uh, then you don't really feel as alone because entrepreneurship can be actually quite a lonely uh, a process because you have a lot of challenge. And uh, it's great, the coffee, the environment, and also when, for instance, our clients go and, uh, uh, to Incubase and we have a really nice place to sit and there's always someone like Tim or Rance or Mike asking, hey, how did you go to the consultation? And you feel, uh, you really feel like you're, it's a team and you're supported. Cool. And uh, Kuhn, how's that for you, beside of the super good coffee that, uh, that we have here in Incubase? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't drink coffee, but I think I already have my money's worth of uh, Fanta from Incubase. But <laughs> uh, besides all the besides all the like help and stuff, I think for me, just personally, uh, like there's stuff that Incubase does for your startup. But I think personally, it also just helps me focus because uh, because of this environment, like 
I have a lot of trouble in uh, during Corona to at home focus on one thing. I'm usually every five minutes, every 10 minutes, I'm focusing something else on this, on that. It's very hard for me to just focus for like 10 hours on a day or something like that on the same thing. But when I go to Incubase and I'm just sitting on the office or in the office, I'm able to do this. So I think it's also just like this perfect environment to just work on entrepreneurship, I think, just relaxed. Okay, you have yeah. uh, actually really a, your, your office here at Incubase. Does, does it also feel like an office uh, when you are here? Yeah, we have like uh, two or three cubicles, they're called. So you have like the flex workspace of Incubase. I, I don't know how much you've said about it, but you have the flex workspace and then the, the cubicles, which are like dedicated small offices, pretty much. And we're with already quite a large team, so we had to get like a second or maybe a third cubicle kind of like near each other. Um, we've joined Incubase in the summer, so we were only able to sit there with like three people uh, instead of like four or five. So it was, a, it was a little bit weird to not sit there with the whole team. But what we did was we spread like we did a couple of people in those offices, usually the developers. Uh, myself was one of the people who just we were just stuck in there working on it. And then the rest of the people were on the flex workspace walking around and meeting. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's just a lot of fun to have this, um, let's be honest, like pretty cheap uh, place uh, to just be with your whole team and just work physically okay. together. Nice, nice to hear. How's it for you, Johnny? Is it uh, an office for you? How, how do you uh, experience yeah. uh, Incubase? I also got uh, uh, this cubicle. Um, we sit there and uh, we have our monitors there, but then there's these rooms where uh, you can take your clients and it's like more of a meeting room. So it's really nice. Okay. So in some moment uh, you have to leave Incubase. In Incubator, you know, you grow out of it. What, what are your next steps? When do you grow out? Are you uh, Gianni first? Well, the sure. first. You talk first, Kun, you first. Okay, sure. Um, I'll, uh, I'll say that to get out of Incubase, I think we would need to get um, like our first paying users. Our, our strategy is like a little bit risky or like uh, different. We're going for the very Silicon Valley-esque strategy of make a great product and then grow very fast, like make it all super ready, super scalable, and then grow very fast. So right now we're still like in the full uh, product development stage. We did some betas and we did some MVPs. Uh, now we're actually making the full product for the, hopefully a launch in the summer. I think for us, um, that launch is gonna decide when we're gonna move out of Incubase. Uh, yeah, we would, we would just need to get that growth started. I think that's for us the next step. Nice, good luck with that. And Johnny, when do you grow out of Incubase? Yeah, so, um, yeah, we are growing, we are scaling a lot, we are getting more clients and more projects, so we actually need more people, so if anyone is watching, you can always contact us. <laughs> um, when we get this, uh, uh, when we feel that we are big enough and stable enough to move out and to have a uh, big office for a lot of people. Otherwise, it's it's just very comfortable in the incubator. Okay, thank you both. Uh, I look forward to meet you here again uh, at the bar at Incubase to drink a coffee or a tea or whatever uh, you prefer, a Fanta. And um, good luck with your uh, startups. And we're going to watch the UT Challenge video. Entrepreneurial University. Well, that was an exciting video, right? Together with Soapbox and a lot of other parties within the UT, 
I've been involved in the organization of the UT Challenge 2021, or I mean 2020, because at the moment we are already working on the edition of 2021. And therefore, next to me stands Eline. And Eline is my successor as Deep Portfolio Holder Entrepreneurship within the Student Union Board. So I'm really curious, Eline, what will the UT Challenge of 2021 look like? Thank you, Emily. Well, uh, the uh, UT Challenge of this year will be great, of course, and it's a great opportunity for you to elaborate on your idea or project, to enlarge your network together with the partners, and to become an entrepreneur. And don't worry, you don't have to know anything about entrepreneurship because the UT Challenge is going to help you with that. Um, and together with the big partner network of the UT Challenge, you can go to workshops, go to network events, and then maybe build your own business model or begin your own startup. So it's a great opportunity. And don't forget to subscribe because on the 9th of March, there will be a, a big kickoff event. Uh, so I hope you can join that and you have a month to subscribe. So uh, I it hope is. I can see you there. Sign up now. Yes. <laughs> Yes, are we back on track? Great. Um, welcome back for the, the, the almost the final part of uh, uh, this one year Incubase uh, uh, live. I, I think throughout the whole show you already noticed uh, uh, we are an incubator, we are not CNN, we are not uh, Etiel Fear or whatever kind of company. Uh, but that's also not our vision or our goal. And um, uh, I have two guests here, Case and Anna Kolen. Welcome at the table. Um, maybe to right away start off as we were just talking about uh, investing a bit ago and you, s you asked me like, hey, did you see or did you invest in Clubhouse? Yes. Now, people that don't know Clubhouse, it's like no cameras involved. It's just audio, a phone, <laughs> Apple, and <laughs> it's being fixed. So uh, we could have done this talk also via uh, a Clubhouse. I didn't invest. You said like, no, but you wish you uh, uh, did course, because... I think they, they raised because like... Because I told him yes to invest. You didn't listen to your own daughter? Or no, no, is, not in time. That's a good thing because uh, um, I, I think at least most people know you maybe by name or at least then from, from booking. Uh, um, then maybe you always have that relevance like, ah, you're the daughter of, but you're of course also Anne, uh, yeah. uh, CEO of a company, student power. In a bit you will share more um, about it. But let's dive first into some family matters because uh, um, at the beginning I always uh, I already said in the upfront as I'm not a shrink so uh, mm -hmm. let's see how far we can go with uh, uh, getting things on the table um, but maybe with you Anna then how is it to be the daughter of Case Colin? Well he's a great dad first of all uh, <laughs> he works a lot of course but uh, if something important is going on he's always there um, I can learn a lot from him sometimes it's also like you say of course um, people have a prejudice, um, you're the daughter of. Um, so in the beginning, maybe I'm one step behind, but then I can still prove that I can do something myself as well. And then usually it's fine. Um, and yeah, I can learn a lot from him. I'm really happy with, with him as a father. Oh, that's a, a good thing, thing to start <laughs> with, yeah. Like, oh, the, the, we need to have tissues almost. No, great, but, the, <laughs> but then of course, the other way around, how is it to be the father of Anna Kolen? Uh, it's great to be the father of great kids. Uh, we have four kids, Anna is one of them, and we are very happy with our kids. Uh, but it's also very difficult uh, because, uh, because of what I did. It's easy to tell Anna and, and other people, you have to do this, you have to do that. So many times, uh, consciously, I have to say nothing. Uh, and, and then sometimes, Anna doesn't say it anymore now, but when she was much younger, and my friends would say, how is it with your fa father? And she would say, he knows nothing, because many times I don't say anything because I want my kids to do their own thing. And so it's great to be the dad of a kid, but it's also difficult if you have the same hobby, which is work, to sometimes just not say something to make sure they learn it themselves. Yeah, that's especially if I ask, uh, ask a question, then he very often was like, yeah, I don't know. And then I just know he knows. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he doesn't A father know. that doesn't know. So is yeah. that, is yeah. that, was that helpful? Is it to find out your own spots? Yes, definitely. Or? Yeah, at the time, if you're in a really tough situation and, and he says he doesn't know and I know he knows, it's annoying. 
But then afterwards, I usually have learned a lot of it, and it's very helpful. But how was it then for you as being young? Were you aware? Eh? Because it's, it's easy, of course, now to talk about, for instance, Booking.com, because everybody says, ah, big success, unicorn, the whole thing. Now, in a bit, we will discuss it also. But when you once started at the other side here of the street in the BTC building, yeah, you were not there then, I think. But Morrison, um, so, so how, how was it then to, to grow up and... Like, did you understand anything what he was doing? Yeah, or? so actually Kees was already involved with booking before I was born. So, of course, if you're that young, yeah, you don't see anything of it. Um, I think when I was in uh, who says, uh, primary school, last year of primary school, uh, he said, uh, oh, I sold booking, I never have to work again. Well, uh, that was not, not the case. <laughs> he <laughs> continued with like hundreds of other companies. Uh, but that's also really nice uh, because I see him very passionate about everything he's doing and doing all these different things. Uh, and yeah, I, I can sometimes also go with him. So for example, when I was, was 12 years old, I wanted to be a movie director. And uh, he took me to Booking.com one weekend with the management team because they had a trainings weekend and they trained their top level people uh, to make a company movie and to build a team. And I could just be there and uh, help a bit. And it was really great experience. So I I usually can go somewhere because of that relation as well. And that's yeah, yeah that's really nice, of course. <laughs> so so you, you gained also a lot from from yes. it indeed. Yeah. And and, uh, and maybe then also towards you guys. As in, uh, um, I think that 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 even I know that uh, also for the people at home, there is a chat, of course, in YouTube. Feel, please feel free to join in the chat, yeah. do your questions and other stuff because. We have people here that can shout it to us if they think we what we say doesn't make sense. Uh, um, but the, um, the, the, the the decision of having like that business life, uh, going for these kind of big goals, and then also a family life. Yeah. Uh, you, you have four kids, so uh, um, is it easy or what, like can you give any advice? Uh, I don't think I can give much advice because everybody has to do what he or she likes himself or herself. Um, I choose a lot to work always. Uh, I always say success is a choice and you have to choose and most people choose not to be successful because success is what you define yourself. And I wanted to build a big company so that means you have to work like crazy every day, seven days a week, almost 365 days a year. Uh, which means that you have to offer your family a little bit. So many times you went on holiday for a week, winter sports and things like that. Uh, but there were many weeks I didn't see my family, sometimes months. Uh, and yeah, is that good, is that bad? I don't know. Uh, we have a good relationship in the family. Uh, it, it's still the same family for me, so it worked out well. But yeah. was it good? I don't know. It's very difficult to say. Easy but my, to choi say, yeah. my choice was to build that, that company to work. Yeah. And, and to have a family. Yeah. And then uh, um, I know it, 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 you said it more often, eh? as in uh, it's good to know your qualities. Uh, uh, to know what you're good at. Uh, and then we were also talking up front and you said like, yeah, but Case also always says it's good what you're not good at. And, um, but, but, but if you have to say from your father, as in, are there any points that you think? <laughs> yes, <laughs> there are, of course. Uh, I think he also knows some of me. Um, but for example, he's terrible at math. I'm, be I'm better at math. But then he's better at finance. Uh, in the beginning, I struggled a lot with finance at the university. I didn't pass any of the finance courses first time. Um, but yeah, then I have him to help sometimes. So that's good. So you, you uh, I, I don't think everybody's good at everything. Uh, so everybody has the good and the weak points. And, uh, I think if you want to build success as a company, uh, there's many things you have to do. But one of the points you really have to do to build a big company, big time successful, is to build a big team. Mm. And the team is a lot of different people. And I always say, uh, you have to fight every day with each other without making a fight. Yeah. Which is, is a bit strange, but you really have to go deep on everybody's specialty. But in the end, you have to work together in your company, all together. And everything in a big, good company, everything has to be almost perfect. Yeah. And you can maybe do 10% of that or 5% of that. So you need to work with a team and you really have to divide things and to know who you ask for what. So at Booking, we always said, you know, uh, when people said, who's the boss, we said nobody. Because when somebody's the boss and who's the boss, it depends on the subject we are discussing. Mm. If it's about databases, I was not the boss. If it's about security, I was not the boss. If it's about finance, there was the CFO. It's about legal, it's the legal counsel. And so we do it all together. And, and so we always said, it's not clear who's the boss because that depends on the subject. 
And then, but the other people have influence and they talk and they discuss and they make sure that the ones being in charge on that subject is doing the best possible job. Yeah, but, but if we then, uh, let, let, let's dive into to, to student power, your yeah. new business. And, yes. and uh, I know that, that um, also based on what you said, who's the boss? Eh? Like, like, like it, 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 you need to be good at something. And you said already uh, in the beginning of the talk, actually, as in uh, uh, case or is it like, I don't know. I, said, I don't know. So then your daughter follows in the sort of footsteps as in also uh, having their own business. Um, and then you have a father now that says like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And how's that going? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it's annoying, like I said, but uh, yeah, usually I've learned a lot. Um, but it's even in, in cases when he maybe doesn't know. So um, recently something went really bad uh, and I didn't have any time at all to fix it. Um, and that's actually when you also get creative because you have to look at other ways than your usually, usual ways. So if you have to find someone, uh, usually you ask the people you know. Uh, but now I also have to ask people I didn't know because I didn't have time to, to wait for a response from everyone. No. And uh, like this, I, for example, found a really great developer now. Uh, he's really talented. He's very productive and he's great. <laughs> So sometimes I think it's also better if something goes wrong or if, if you don't know, because then you have to work together as a team and then you have to be creative and find solutions for it. But I yeah. think what happened is, uh, we go, don't go into details, but it's a good example. So what I will tell to Anna is, make sure you understand the problem, make sure you know your alternatives and make it choice and get it done. And I don't say what to do, how to do, but I tell her, make sure you make a choice, make sure you make a step forward. You don't get stuck in that problem and you stay there for weeks solve it and then she says what should i do i don't know it's your company it's your decision but make sure you make a decision make sure you make a step forward and that that's how i always help young people to motivate them to do something to go forward because if you have a problem you get stuck in it that's where you get stuck yeah. and so if you build a new company you have to do 50 times at the same time and if you get stuck in every problem you don't make any progress and that's where you are so that's yeah. that's the way i try to help them and then, for example, she had something else which was not so good. Uh, and that's what I learned from American people. Uh, they always will say then, if you are in, in deep shit and you have to solve it, you don't know what to do and it's going to cost you, you you're going to be you're going to make a loss. In the US, they say, take your medicine, which means, you know, you have that loss anyway. Take it. Yeah. Make sure you don't try to solve it because you can't solve it. Just take your loss, throw it away and go on with the good things. And that kind of things, I think, that helps a lot. Yeah, eh? that helps a lot, like these, just these general visions. And he has a lot of these general ideas about how you have to build a company without really going into the details of how you exactly should do it. Um, but it still can be very helpful advice. But, but I can also then imagine, uh, sort of, yeah, it's not an elephant in a room, but sort of that, that, that people start bringing up these assumptions, like, yeah, easy for you to say, yeah. because your father is, is, is Case Colin. As in uh, investment, you invested over a thousand companies, uh, as in why not in your company? Or, hey, yeah, your, your father can pick up the phone and can, um, how is that? It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, you don't do. <laughs> I actually, so right now, for example, I'm raising a seed round. Uh, I'm about at about four of the four fifth of the of the round I have committed from investors now. Um, and yeah, he's not doing <laughs> that much. <laughs> <laughs> and then people ask me, like, fr I have friends literally asking me, like, why don't you just go to your dad? And I'm like, yeah. I, yeah, he doesn't do it, but also I, I don't want him to do everything because that way I won't learn anything. And now I also have other people involved. Um, he's my dad, so he will help, he will even give advice if, if he's not an investor. Um, so it's also good to have other people on board uh, that, that have other insights and maybe a more but diversity. It's, it's the same thing well. again. If she cannot raise capital from other people, then it's not a good idea and then it's not mm. going to work. So I can fund money, but it doesn't help her. And then Anna said uh, a few weeks ago, I don't think I can close the rounds. So I say, you have to speak to more people. To who I have to speak? I said, no, speak to more people, <laughs> ask more people, and some of them will do it. And so you increased the number of people you contacted. Yeah, yeah I, in the beginning I was really like, I have to ask everyone one by one, and if they have to wait until they say no, and then I, then I go to the next one, because it's not nice if, if they say yes, and I already said, yeah, sorry, I, you cannot invest anymore. But then he, he gives these kind of things, and now I've Just almost ask closed more people, it. And, yeah. and it will work out, or not. 
Yeah. yeah, to you then. But 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 tell us, student power. Uh, it yes. was uh, uh, Alicia was in the news, of course, and via some channels. And you yeah. actually had your first clubhouse with with, yes. with student power <laughs> also <laughs> already uh, uh, yesterday yeah. or the day before. Yeah. Um, tell us, w w what is it, and what are you going to do with it? Yes. Yeah, so student power is an online matchmaking platform where uh, companies can basically post a vacancy, and students can directly respond to it. Uh, to be hired somewhere. Uh, and this is for internships, traineeships, uh, side jobs. Um, so that's, that's what it basically is at the moment. Uh, eventually, we want to grow with this generation, so Generation Z, um, approximately that generation, um, to be the recruitment platform for all types of jobs. Because you see many people my age that now are going to have a job somewhere. These are freelancers, or they're working as gig workers in temporary gigs um, for multiple companies. So I think recruitment is going to change very big time <laughs> in the future. Uh, and I want to be able to support all types of jobs uh, and to really connect the right people to the right companies. Okay, great. And, and um, so, so it's a bit, bit of the, the cliche question is, and you said already, yeah, it's going to change bigly. Uh, is that also the company that you're raising the seed round four? As in, so the, the, these are the next steps, as in to yes, right yes, away? Yes, yes, I'm raising the seed round for student power, yeah. Right? Yes. Um, there's even an official moment, actually, would we just dive into it, because uh, uh, it's not per se uh, that you're only here to, to talk uh, together yeah. uh, about doing business, but... Uh, uh, we're doing business. We're doing business <laughs> even, because you will be our newest member here in, uh, in Incubase, yeah. so it's... Uh, um, it's a pleasure to have you, and I, I have to say also to, to, uh, to be honest, why should I lie, but more as in, uh, the fun part is when we were uh, talking about uh, 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 entering and like uh, if there's a fit, um, uh, I liked what you said, as in, hey, um, I think that, 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 that the access to certain elements, of course, that the incubator has are relevant. But also like the network yes. and, and, and the community and all these kind of things. And, and, and that, that for me, it was like, oh, cool. As in, it's not like, yeah. I already have that, so I just look for yeah. a place or a nice, yeah. uh, the, the nice coffee or whatever. But more as in, uh, as in hey, I understand that. Uh, I saw somebody that really says like, I will do this not by myself because you're always. Uh, what you said, you need yeah. a team, but yeah. I can, I will do this uh, and find my own ways. So. Yeah, yeah. The more I'm working on this company, the more I realize the same. He says, uh, you cannot do anything on your own. Um, so you need people, and I think a network, especially also in this type of business, it's it's very important. And I think. Uh, like Incubase can really facil facilitate these type of uh, connections. Nice. Yeah, maybe then uh, uh, when everybody is, is, is watching, actually, you can uh, um, uh, see if it, if it then grows up to whatever it becomes. Uh, if in that incubator, people maybe that are now feel, watching or see you in this camera, <laughs> they're like, Wow, I saw that moment live on, uh, uh, on YouTube happening. We even have uh, Erik uh, walking around uh, here or a photographer. Uh, um, uh, uh, taking that official moment, because I have the contract uh, here. Um, so we have a panel over there oh, to show you. that we are really Corona proof and stuff. But uh, here is the contract. Thank and there you. And there is supervision of your dad, but also you're signing yourself, as in... Uh, we don't I, I have to read anything. it for a bit now. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time to read it. Yeah, take your time to read it. People, you can grab a drink. No. <laughs> Yes. And then you show it, of course. Huh? <laughs> okay. That's great. Thanks. Oh, we need oh. to squeeze in. Congratulations. For the people. Oh. Yeah, just a little. Do I have to stand or? Yeah, take the distance. Eh? <laughs> okay, and show the contract. Okay, that's it. One, two, three, got it. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, welcome and uh, yes. uh, uh, let, let's indeed uh, try to, to, to grow business and uh, uh, make it into to, to, to a success. Um, um, and also, uh, 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 let's talk about a few topics that, that, that they gain success to, to both of you. As in, there are a few hot topics and I think that most people that are even watching also are starting. Can startups. I say something about incubation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a great thing to do. Uh, if you look in the US, most of the companies going public now, but also a lot of new tech companies, they all come out of incubators. Even uh, the Dutch message board uh, went to the US to go to an incubator. Uh, and they learned how to make a plan, how to present, how to raise funds. Uh, and I think that's really what is needed in the Netherlands too, in, in Europe and in general. Uh, because if you're a startup, it's not so easy to do all those things on yourself. And you know, I'm the dad of Anna, so she has some advances. I know how to do this, but I think it is great for other startups that there is other people who can help them 
to do these kind of things. Because they, yes, they have to do it completely themselves, but it helps a lot if they can get the first steps yeah. within a group of experienced people to help them to do the right things. Because in our time when we started companies, it took five or 10 years before you were really starting to get sorted out all these things. And nowadays, as we know, the things go faster and faster. It's important that you get help in the first steps to get there in time yeah. and to get in phase of the investor. So uh, I'm also involved, as I told you before, with some incubators in the US. Uh, and it's really a great model to get young people started fast. So, so, so I think it's a good thing to do. Yeah, so, so, so uh, the, the, we, we had a talk, of course, with, with Jorg and, uh, and Thorsten already, yes, and uh, they are still relevant. Yes, they're they're relevant like, yes. uh, uh, because you, 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 with booking, you once started in an incubator, actually, based set building, yeah. indeed. And, uh, but that was, what was it, in the 90s? As in, uh, I didn't start booking, Geert Jan no, yeah, started yeah, booking. Geert Jan, that was when you joined. Early, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he started in the, in the BTC, Bedrijf yeah. Technology Centrum. It's, that was the building here opposite, which is demolished now. Uh, and a lot of good startups started there. Uh, and uh, Van der Kronenberg, as, a, as yeah. the rector of the university, he gave some funds to all the startups. Um, the top loan, yeah, still the, existing. The, yeah. Still, yeah, it was only 20,000 guilders, I don't know what it is now. 40,000 euros, so at yeah. the least the so inflation. It, it helps so a lot, but you need a bit more even. And that was that building was more or less f uh, giving that opportunity to those people. Uh, and the people there were also helping them, but not as it is nowadays. Because at that time, you had just more time to build the basics of the company. Yeah. And the time is getting squeezed because the knowledge in the world goes around so fast that if you have a good idea, you cannot wait five years to get it done. And you no. need to start faster. So. And I think yeah. a, a, a good thing is, and we, 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 of course, pre-discussed as being said, and, the, uh, um, and I think you also said, yes, the, 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 at the end, then the focus of an incubator also needs to be on the business. And you can yeah. set up all the kind of things or organize a lot of things. They are relevant, but at the end, it is about setting up that business and, 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 and growing that startup. And I, can, like, I, I, I have a few things that, that, that may, mostly people will always ask, at least the first one, as in the, the question, so the startups, even maybe from our community, that are watching um, that always ask this que a question, how do you build a platform? As in, it's like the, the catch-22 or the chicken egg, how do you want to call it? You have clients, you have customers, and you uh, sort of have to raise both sides. Now, I think that uh, everybody is always asking, can we ask Jitse from uh, Thijsbezorgd or Takeaway or a case? Because how do you do it? In a nutshell. Uh, I think you have to aim big and you have to have a very clear goal. And people ask me sometimes, how do you get these visions? I don't have so much vision. I give you an example. If you think about 2050, which is 30 years from now, what do you think? Do people sell more electric cars or more diesel cars? Electric. Electric. So it's very simple to make a vision, like where is the world going to? If I ask you the same question for 2025, you don't know. No. Because most likely it's diesel, and maybe it's electric, but you have no clue. But if you look further away, it's very clear how things will work. So in the 90s, we said everything will be digitized. But we were the floppy disks, and there were the big floppy disks. And we had dot records, and we had tape records, and, and later with the CD, and the DVD, and the Blu-ray. But we knew everything would be digitized. And we have to go through all of it to get there. But we knew in 30 years everything is digitized, so we have to work on it. So for example, we wanted to build a real online company. So an online company doesn't have a phone number. So in that time at Booking, we didn't put a phone number on the website. And our competitors said, they are crazy. You should put a phone number on the website. But we said, a website, an online business, has no phone number to book. So it, it is really important uh, to set your goal. And then it's important to start, and you start with building a product. Uh, but you also have to get customers to use the product, because many engineering people, technical people, they build for years on a product, and they never go live. So we always said, put the product live as soon as possible. And it's funny, I think you said Jitze, I know Jitze, and uh, in the early years, always in the picture, you saw him on a bike in the city delivering the boxes. If you look at Geert Jan, he visited the hotels himself on his bike, which is the same picture more or less. But you have to understand the business. I spend myself a lot of time in customer service, with hotel sales, with IT, with, with all kinds of things to really understand the business. And you have to get it going. So yes, you have to buy uh, customers, but you have also to bring reservations somewhere. And if you don't start, you will never build a business. Then if you build the business, first the product has to work. So in our time at Booking, there was a big problem. Because if you made a reservation on our website, hotels had no internet. And emails got blocked into spam cop at that time. So we had to make sure the reservation came to the hotel. So the product has to work. At a certain moment, we had a few hundred faxes in the company to fax all the reservations to the hotels. Because that was the only means of communication in that yeah. time, 25 years ago, which had the confirmation of the receipt. If you send an email, it was gone, and you didn't know where it went. 
and then mostly would not arrive. So we need the confirmation, we build the facts. So the product has to work. Then in the beginning, people didn't trust it, so they called the hotel. Is the reservation there? Uh, yes, it's there. But so in the end, people have to trust it. It has to work, it has to be convenient. So it has to be more easy than to go to the shop. And then I think the most important point comes, which is uh, a big challenge for all companies. Your business model has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So once things are working and people like to do it, it is really important that it's cheaper than what they did before. If you cannot make the new product or service cheaper than it was before, it will not fly. It will not grow big because if people can save money somewhere else, they will do something else and they will go back to the old things they know. So if it becomes cheaper, if it becomes easier and cheaper, it's going to grow very fast and then it's building your team. And then the challenge is scalability and scalability is a little bit in technology because if I talk to startups, say my software is scalable. That's nice, but it's almost impossible because always if you grow, you didn't build the things you need at that moment, so it's not scalable because it's not there. Mm -hmm. But what needs to be scalable is your people. Yeah. You need to be able to serve all your customers. If there is uh, 50,000 reservations out there and there is a problem, and 50,000 people call you, you have to pick up the phone 50,000 times. That's the big challenge. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 these are some great uh, 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 insights indeed. And uh, you talk also the, 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 a bit of the elements of team in it. And it was also one of the hot topics. Now, you're, Anna, you're going to build, build a company around recruitment, a team, yeah. finding yeah. the team. Um, like some insights on like building the best team. Yes, yeah, so my team is very small right now. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> so, <a CEO? laughs> yeah, no, yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, I just had a few, uh, have a few people right now. Um, but of course, I also need to plan ahead. So if I know in 10 years I need these type amount of people, then you already need to know. I'm already thinking, for example, like about uh, if I have this developer now and then maybe next year I need more developers, then I need to hire a CTO and I need to have, have someone that can train also the new people in the company, how everything works. So I think it's a lot about planning ahead and knowing in time what you want to do because then you can hire or train people. Yeah. Um, as you probably and, see, and, and, yeah. in building a team, it's also funny that young people can do more than people expect. Uh, so what is a, a big pitfall, and I help a lot of young entrepreneurs with that, a pitfall is to hire older people of my age who did it before. Because if you once did it, it's not likely you're going to do it again, because the new thing is different. And what is so great about young people, they have no experience. So if there is a new technology or there's a new service, they have to find out what it is. So they really have to be curious and have to sort it out. That means the product gets better. Because if you take people with a lot of experience and they do something they did before, most likely that's not the innovation. No. So it's also that it works well to build something new with new people. And of course, it's good to have some older people with experience to help the young people say, oh, but I did this. But the young people have to decide how the product is going to look like. And that's, that's, that's a very difficult balance because a lot of people also like myself, oh, this is how you do it. And that's our biggest pitfall because a new thing you do in a different way. And people think you're always right. <laughs> so that also is that, that, that's my biggest problem. Yeah, yeah. Biggest problem. Uh, you can yeah. probably see it already on, on the screen here in the, in the studio. As in, uh, I saw one of the questions being raised in the chat was, uh, how can we, uh, what what's, does the, the Twente ecosystem, eh? is it like the best place to set a business? Now, I think it's uh, it's good to, to set up like uh, Twente is 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 great, but uh, you need more than Twente because uh, especially if you want to grow business, uh, there's more than um, this re region. And to do that, we uh, uh, invited a special guest, uh, actually also specially for you two, uh, but also of course the others to join. Uh, and I think you can hear us already in uh, uh, Constantine van Oranje, special envoy of TechLeap. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. you hear me? Yes. Uh, a, a you great see me too. What is it? <laughs> is this only audio or is this also a video? Um, we, we can see you at least and uh, I think okay. the people via YouTube can see us. So, <laughs> uh, But we can you are, see you. For me you are a dark blob. Yeah, but we see you clearly. We see you clearly. Okay. So, uh, um, and, and in these Corona times, maybe also our haircuts you don't want to see. Yeah, in case you're still fine with your haircut. But <laughs> it should be fine, yeah. <laughs> And um, uh, a special envoy at, uh, at TechLeap, uh, uh, of course, building the, the, the Dutch tech system, the, the, the Dutch leaders in, in tech. Um, maybe you listened already a bit into the conversation, as in, uh, I, I know that Kees and uh, uh, you know each other. What do you think of Kees? <laughs> uh, I think Kees is, uh, is a remarkable person in the whole Dutch ecosystem. I think he's one of the few investors who's really 
uh, kind of stringing together companies to follow a vision. And, uh, and he has uh, built uh, multiple visions. Um, and then he, he goes in big. And then uh, if he sees that uh, certain things don't work, he manages to, to pivot. And he pivots out and he starts something else. And, uh, but it's always big. It's always ambitious. And, uh, but he always has time as well to, uh, to talk to people, to, uh, to talk to entrepreneurs, to listen to young people. And as he was just saying, you know, he has a big trust in, in young people, which is, uh, which is very good. Okay, and, and, and you're a family man, of course, also yourself, uh, uh, have daughters, uh, at least a daughter, and, and see, uh, uh, Anna, hey, you're going into business, um, mm -hmm. any advice, or happy to see that? Yeah, I have a son who's in e-commerce, um, but he's not as far as he, that he's uh, thinking of hiring uh, CTOs and CFOs uh, like, like, uh, like she is, but... Uh, um, no, I think just uh, go and do it and, uh, and, and, and get the advice, uh, all the advice that you can. Um, well, you have a f and also not only of case, uh, <laughs> uh, but also, uh, you know, other people. And, and because it's, it's, it's great to make mistakes and to learn from them, but uh, it's also great to sometimes avoid them and if you can. And so try to be uh, kind of in one hand stubborn and, and, and hold on to your ideas and, and you know, try to go fast and then but on the other hand also know that there are a lot of people that can support you and so strategically uh, try to get that support. Yes, sounds great. Yeah, the, 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 maybe the case you there they are. get a, ah, we, you can oh. see us now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, a, a, a case maybe going to, 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 to you then, as in, uh, uh, you know, tech leave, of course. Uh, yeah. uh, what do you think of uh, uh, the role that Constantine is playing to maybe give you time back to say something there? No, I think it's a very important role. We worked a lot together in the early days. Uh, and I think uh, what I always preach is that after some time, it's time for new people. So, so Nelly was there first, now Constantine is there. I was there for a while, now there's new people. Uh, at a certain moment, you said what you want to say, you did what you want to do. And after three, four, five, six or seven years, somebody else has to do it because this person has new ideas. Uh, but I think uh, TechLeap is a big, a big step forward uh, compared to what we had with uh, the startup Delta. Uh, and it's, I think, what we envisioned, uh, Constantine, you know, that, that uh, there's more support now for startups and it's a culture. And it's very difficult to point at it, but I think what we're doing now since, I don't know, five, six years, uh, starts to work. Uh, because you see more and more attention for startups, you see the culture's changing, people start to be proud on a startup. Uh, because if you go back 10 years, nobody was really proud on startups, you know? And I think that's one of the first things, that young kids want to do something where people are proud of. And now it's getting our culture that it's good to start a company. And yeah. you see there's more people like me, it's not only the booking people, but now it's the IDN people, it's Jitsa, there's more people. And what you see with people like us, it's nice to make some money, but very soon you have more than enough to have a good life because if you eat more, it's not healthy. Uh, so what you start doing, you start doing what you did before. You start investing in other companies and then you start helping other companies and most of your money is gone, but some comes back because you build some good companies. And if you build good companies, these people start helping new people again. Yeah. And in the US, this started 30, 40 years earlier than here and you see the result of Silicon Valley. But I think we have already some good examples in the Netherlands, like in, the, in Limburg uh, also, around uh, a lot of other stuff, yeah. uh, that it starts to work, that these companies start to work, they start to grow, they start to get bigger, and then they start to get spin-offs. But, but, but still, uh, Constein, you, you, you recently uh, did your, the, the state of Dutch tech, um, yep. where you also uh, launched uh, some numbers. Eh? So as a case, you were saying already a bit about the, the, the situation in the US, and, and the, one of these things, uh, Constein, you said, is that the start to scale up ratio, for instance, in the Netherlands is, uh, uh, 16% in the US is, for instance, 51% uh, and, of course, uh, with you, Anna, we have a, 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 a woman in tech, and, but, but, but you, you mentioned the, the diversity, uh, indeed, that is really lacking behind in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, well, it is, it is everywhere, it is abysmal, uh, so it's, um, and the Netherlands is, is, I'd say, particularly bad, but, uh, you know, if you're talking, uh, uh, we're saying the worst statistic actually, which we don't talk about that much, is that only 17% of venture capital went to uh, teams that had one woman in there. So uh, still maybe a majority of men. That meant, means that um, 70, or no, 87, 87% of all startups that received investment um, had only male uh, founding teams. And, uh, and that's quite a 
an incredible statistic. And, and actually, we had a, a, during the summit, we had a very um, uh, interesting contribution by um, Reid Hoffman and uh, Chris Ye. I don't know if you've heard that. I've heard for sure, but I don't know yeah, yeah. again. Yeah. Well, they, we, I mean, asked him, you know, because they, they are, you know, they've been the authors of blitz scaling. So, and, and if you want to go fast, obviously, uh, it's easier to work with people that are all like you. So I said, is there something, you know, that an early stage startup should, uh, could actually have a very homogenous team and then start working to make the team more diverse later? And uh, they both said, you know, there, is, there, there are um, some fires that you can let burn. Uh, so problems you don't have to uh, spend too much attention to you'll deal with them later and others you have to deal with immediately. And they said, um, uh, maybe in the earliest stage, a, a, a homogenous team goes a bit faster, but um, it will be very hard to uh, create a culture of uh, inclusiveness uh, later on in the company. So this is something you have to do from the very, very start. And then uh, Reed actually added and said, yeah, and if you, if you don't invest in the networks where you want to get your staff from, um, then, uh, and you haven't kind of, you have no contacts with those kind of diverse talent pools, then you will probably not be able to tap into them. And, uh, and you're going to, and that's going to hurt you later on in, in the growth of your company. So, um, this was a very strong plea for founders to, um, to be very, um, very careful, you know, and when you, when you find you, you look for your co-founders, uh, to also, to not only look at people that look like you. Um, to try and, and, and go for more diverse teams. But, but, yeah, indeed, but okay, so you, you said you invested over a thousand companies, or at least, at least related, of course, doing a lot of coaching. And the, the, the topic that, that Constantine is mentioning. Yeah, is my, my statistics are much worse, but all the companies I invested in and I built myself who did well, they were very diverse. At Booking, we were 50 50 from the start. Uh, when I left Booking, it was exactly 50 50, and we had 99 nationalities in Amsterdam in the office. And even at Uber, while there have been other uh, news uh, parts in the news, but in Uber there was a very good diverse, uh, uh, diversion in the company. There were a lot of women also in the top. Uh, and I think it helps a lot because for these kind of companies, the customers is also 50-50. And you have to make sure you build your customer up like your audience. Uh, but I've mainly been involved with companies that are dominated by male. Uh, and sometimes it's very hard. But I agree, Constantine, if it's not right from the beginning, it's almost impossible to correct or to change and, and yeah. the, the best a, is, a bit yeah. of a, um, you know, we notice that if you have a um, kind of, it's not only male, huh? it's, it's, it's just, it, the most important thing is not diversity, but it's, in, it's being in, inclusive. Because if you grow and you want to get uh, talent and also external talent and you want to go international, then if you have a, just a, a kind of a single white male Dutch team, you know, how likely is it that you're going to get anyone from the outside? You know, people, the language will be Dutch and everybody will be thinking Dutch. And, and also, if you are only Dutch people or, you know, and, and it's very homogenous, you, you start to think the same. Your horizon is the same. Nobody will tell you we have to go 10 times as fast or let's go, let's go international because everybody has the same framework. And, uh, and I think um, that is one of the reasons why many of our companies do kind of still think very locally and nationally because they all come from the same backgrounds and um, so it's something that like novelty and, and, and incubators accelerators should should spend more time on and, and, and give more attention to because it's really early early stage where you can uh, can make a difference and, and make people aware that this is an issue that is not just uh, because it's the good thing to do, but it's really strategically relevant. And, but, but maybe then for you, Anna, as in, yeah. uh, uh, in, in, I wouldn't say the new kid on the block because that sounds too bad, but more as in, is this for you then some sort of common sense that you think like, but this is just the way to do it? Or is it like in, it also involved with the situation that was there that you think we really need to set up on that? What's your... Yeah, so I definitely think diversity is important. Um, also, not just male, female, but also all countries, these kind of things. Uh, right now, for example, student power is very focused on the Netherlands, so we have Dutch people. But if we want to go to Germany or Belgium or any other country, we of course also need people from these countries in our team, because these people just know how, how it works there. Um, and I think there's a lot of proof that it is possible. Uh, I forgot her name, but uh, the CEO of Bumble, she she's the youngest woman ever to yeah. bring the company public, and 70% uh, of her management board is... Uh, female. So it's not like there's no good women out there. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think it's important, and I think it is definitely possible. And uh, maybe also if we have more role models um, like Eva de Mol from Capital T, yeah. um, that we can see, oh, it is possible. <laughs> uh, that that will also help a lot. And, and, and then maybe also diving into that, yes, and we, we discussed, of course, yeah, you, you, you did a, 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 a nice plea also for incubators, yeah, the, the need of that. And we talked, of course, to, to Jorg uh, of Utrecht Inc. and uh, Torsten from uh, uh, Reach uh, about still the value of that and the role that everybody needs to play. And, and I think also, Constein, yeah, you, the, the, uh, I wrote it down uh, somewhere, it's like yeah, the... the, the um, uh, let me look it up. The, 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 yeah, the startups are starving for investment, lacking diversity, are strained for talent, and slow to expand internationally. And we're here, of course. Now you have the, 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 the tech lead, the, 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 the changing the Dutch tech leaders, uh, developing them. You have organizations like you mentioned there, ourselves as novelty or incubators. You have uh, serial entrepreneurs, investors, uh, anchors, people that know how to deal with it. Uh, uh, you like uh, setting the new paveway. What kind of long introduction of a question? So question, what kind of role does everybody needs to play to bring it to that next step? Maybe first you, Constantine. Well, it's, it, that's a typical Dutch question. Thanks. Because it assumes we all have to play and, 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 and if I read all the, the, the government documents, they want to play a role in everything and solve every problem. Um, I, I, I really think that it, it, uh, it starts with the entrepreneur and uh, a good entrepreneur with a good business plan uh, has no problems getting uh, funding. And uh, um, obviously, if you are a good engineer and you, you build a wonderful, have a wonderful technology, that's not a good business yet. So that's where the frustration starts. Uh, so um, you have a wonderful product and, and nobody wants to fund you because, you know, investors typically want to get a return. Um, and then you can look at, you know, okay, what's the quality of the investor? So I do think things are not perfect here. So the investors also are sometimes too focused on the return and too short termish and want, you know, you'd prefer to have, uh, have investors that are more supportive of the entrepreneur and want the entrepreneur to succeed and have take a longer term view. So all of that is in ideal situations. But just to, 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 to summarize, I think it's, it's about the entrepreneur the ambition of the entrepreneur and the quality of the entrepreneur and the team that he or she manages to gather and, and the idea. And, um, and then, you know, it's, it's really not putting anything in their way. So it's from your, your guys, the, the tech transfer part, uh, you know, how you deal with IP or how you deal with, uh, with um, shareholdings, you know, all these things that can, you know, can either support the entrepreneur or hold them back or giving them advice, being honest, you know, if you, there are many companies in the Netherlands that get prizes and we all know they're never going to succeed. You know, the, the technology might be nice, but you never, but you know, they're not going to grow big, but we keep giving them prizes and giving compliments instead of giving pretty straightforward and harsh criticism and support to, to, to grow the business. So we are sometimes, I think, too nice. Uh, and finally, you know, I, I would really hope um, that the government uh, and though I really think that we should get along even without the government, but it would be nice if the government sees uh, startups and tech for what it really is. Uh, just look at the uh, stock exchange, uh, you know, um, it's slowly turning completely tech. There's no sector anymore where there's no tech company that is either the challenger or already the dominant player. And we've seen in COVID how big tech has been growing and why? Because these companies keep investing in R&D, keep investing in innovation, have massive amount of data, are applying AI and other technologies. So this is not just a small thing. This is the future of our economy and a future of our competitiveness, our innovation. And, um, and, and we have to start seeing it as that, you know, and we, we have to start looking at the government also to start facilitating that in the same kind of way. The government should be more digitally uh, literate and, uh, and able to provide the kind of services that the people expect because they're getting it uh, commercially if you're on their phones every day and, and, and the government stays way behind. So we have to acknowledge that this is not a, 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 a sp small phenomenon, but that this is actually a, a massive trend where uh, if we don't, um, as, as the Netherlands kind of start acting up and, and, and running faster, we will, we will fall behind and uh, we will not be as competitive. We won't be in the rankings anymore as, as innovative country, but we will we'll be consuming the technology that's being provided by others. Any response? 
No, I agree that it starts with the entrepreneur. I think that was also the first part of how do you build a big company? You have a long-term vision. And if your vision is not international, why would you have international people? But if you want to grow a big company, you want to be international, you have not much choice. You need to be international. And you need to have diversity and, and inclusive. So, like I said, at Booking we had 99 nationalities already 10 years ago. Uh, and the only way to build a big company in Spain from the Netherlands is that you have Spanish people in your company. And if you want to build something in Brazil or in, in Saudi, you need people from that area to help you to build the company there. Uh, so you have to have that culture in your company from the beginning. And I agree, Constantine, if you don't have it in the beginning, but maybe I say it twice now, if you don't have it from the beginning, it's very hard to correct. Yeah. I've been involved with great companies who had a huge potential. And they didn't make it because they were completely uh, national. Uh, for example, a company from Brazil, they were only Brazilians. And, and they did not manage to become international because they had only Brazilians. And they don't get it how it works in the US. And the US people don't get it how it works in Europe. You know? So if you want to go international, if you want to go big, build your company big from day one. Because to change a culture in a company is almost impossible. You set it from the beginning, and that's the way you go. And so if you don't do it from the beginning, it's very hard. Great. Um, we're going to, 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 to round up because uh, uh, we're in the Netherlands and uh, uh, in an hour we all need to be at our homes <laughs> because otherwise we have issues with the evening uh, curfew. Uh, maybe to, to finish off, as a, uh, first to you, as in, uh, you, you, you said already in the pre-conversation, after booking, I will stop. Uh, um, that's not completely true, <laughs> something different <laughs> happens. So I will not ask Kozeltai what the role will be, but, but that's because that's a Dutch question. I'll let's do then the question as in... Uh, um, uh, what will you do? What I will do? In the coming time. I will work the rest of my life, but I also, also have a better balance. So when I stopped working full-time at Booking, where I worked 120 hours a week, I thought, now it's enough, and now I go on pension. And after two weeks, I thought I never again go on pension. <laughs> uh, but I also thought I have to have another balance in my life, otherwise I end up the same again. So I spend now more time on private things. I still work hard, harder than a lot of people, but I also have much more balance now. And I like to work, and I think that's also part, if you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to build something big, it has to be your passion. Because somewhere in the world, there is somebody working harder than you if it's not your passion. Uh, but I also, if you get older, you realize that there's maybe more than work. Uh, so, and then you see even Jeff Bezos now, after 27 years, he says, and now it's enough, and now somebody else does it. He will not stop, but it was too much for 27 years. Yeah. So, and what I, what I learned from, from myself, if I help now young people building a company, I teach them to have a better balance in their life from the beginning. Because if you work too hard, there is a moment that you say, now it's enough and I stop. But to build a good company, you need a very long time, 15 or 20 years. And you cannot keep up 15 or 20 years if you don't have the right balance. So where 25 years ago, I would tell them, you work, you work, you work. And I still say that. But I also tell them now, get a better balance in your life so you can work for 20 years. Yeah. Because building a big company also takes a lot of time. So that's what I changed a lot since, since I left Booking. Still improving. Yeah. <laughs> um, before uh, 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 we really finish off, and we'll do that with, with, with you, Anna, as, uh, also uh, Constantine, thank you for joining us uh, uh, this, this evening. Uh, uh, happy to have you on board and uh, uh, looking forward, I think, also together with, 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 with TechLeap, uh, uh, taking the next steps indeed also to, to get us up. I think we're 12 in the gen genome ranking. What, what is it for 2021? Uh, what shall we say? I think we'll uh, we'll still go up. So uh, no bets that's because that's a, also uh, Dutch. Yeah, we bet. What? That's also Dutch to bet. Eh? So no bets. Like which place? Oh, um, let's go for uh, ten. Ten. Okay. Let's see if next year we will have this conversation indeed and uh, and beat up to ten. Uh, I hope for sure thanks uh, for joining us in. And um, to finish off from here, uh, Anna, uh, uh, we, we, you have the contract still uh, uh, in front of you. It's yes. your uh, first day as member of Incubase. Of course, yes. we have an audience, and this is still uh, on YouTube later on for people to watch. Uh, as you notice, of course, on the screen here is Constantine, but next to that, here there is a camera. So maybe to the whole audience, as in what are your next steps with student power and what do you need? What do people need to do? Team members, whatever you need, we give the last minute to you. Okay, thank you. Well, with student power, we of course need a lot of students and businesses to sign up because if there's a lot of students and businesses on the platform, everyone will benefit. Um, so sign up, 
and play vacancies and uh, meet each other, get a great team together to build your own company and to scale it big. Um, and we will hope to support it in the next years. Um, if you need help placing vacancies, you can also contact us. Uh, if you have any recommendations on how to improve our website, you can also contact us. Uh, we'll be working really hard on the website. We'll also have, um, yeah, for short term future, we also have things planned like automatically recommending the right people for your company. Uh, but in the far away future, uh, it will be for all types of jobs. So also remote recruiting, uh, recruiting freelancers, uh, all these types of things. So thank you for the minute. <laughs> yeah, no, you're welcome. It's uh, time to get business to go big. So we need everybody on board that, uh, that, that yeah. we need for that. Um, uh, thank you both uh, uh, thank you. for your great insights. Yeah. As in, uh, uh, it's a pleasure uh, uh, to have you on board, of course, but Kees also that you're always willing to, to, to help us also give your insights. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, of course, also people watching at home, also the people here that did the quiz, uh, our panels, our startups, uh, Jorg and uh, Thorsten, uh, Kuhn and Gianni, uh, but also the people of the union, the people of the technique and all this stuff. Again, we're not an audio production or video production or whatever because we don't want to be that. We just want to be uh, an incubator, accelerator, whatever you want to call it, to help start up your business. So uh, in that case, uh, if you have that ambition and that vision, the drive also to work for that, feel free to reach out to us via incubase.nl. Um, and hopefully also we see you soon again in this nice building uh, uh, over a coffee or a beer to chat about your business. Uh, have a great night. Uh, uh, stay safe for the hopefully last part of the COVID situation. And then soon uh, we will see each other again. Thanks.